so guys let's go for the first case where we want to find the resistance across the body diagonal of the cube here as you can see the cube arrangement of all the resistance here we are going to assume that all the resistance of all the edges which you can see they all are of same resistance r and here our aim is to find the resistance between point a and point d which is nothing but the body diagonal of the cube so here if i take point a and point d and using this two point to connect to a battery of emf e so here i can say the current is going to travel or enter in the cuboidal arrangement or cube arrangement of the resistance from point d so can i say from point d the current will travel to three different points point e point g and point c so we can say from d it will travel to point e to point g and to point c these are the three branches in which the current i will divide into so at this point we assume that we do not know or we do not have any idea how this current will be divided okay but further from point e the current will again break into two parts to travel to point f and to point h so for e there are two parts in which the current divides f and h for the point g the current divides again into two parts for f and for b so we have f and for b similarly for point c the current divides into two branch as for h and for b so we have h and b so basically if you understand the one terminal the current divides into three branches i can call those branches as de dg and dc and those three branches the current further divides into two branches each which means the total number of branch are going to be six which are ef eh gf gb ch and cb i hope all these points are clear to you now if we go further ahead we can say the point f is actually receiving current from two terminals from e as well as from g and finally that point f is reaching out to point a so i can say point f from here and point f from here are the same terminal to give us the connection to point a so point f we can say merges or passes current to point a similarly point h i can call them as point number 2 which is coming twice so with that means the point h is receiving current from two places one from e and one from c so both the currents merge and that point h again gives the current to point a so i can say the point 2 also gives the current to point a similarly point b is also receiving current from two points from g and from c so i can name them as three points point number 3 which again give current to point a and as you can see the terminal a is common for all of them so they all together is nothing but the one terminal 
which gives the current back to the battery in the form of I. So guys, basically if you understand, I can say the point D gives current to three points E, G and C. E, G and C, these three points divide the currents into two branch but again then merges into one to give the current to three points point number one which is actually F so I can write this as F point number two which is actually H so they give the current to H and point number three which is actually B which is B over here and they together give total current to one single branch or one single terminal I can call it as A and which gives the current I back to the circuit that means if you understand the one terminal gives out current to three branch three branch gives the current to the sixth branch six branch merges to form the three branch and three branch merges to form one single terminal so the pattern goes like one three six three one which means the entire distribution of current is highly symmetrical and that means we can say whenever the current is going to divide in this particular scenario it is going to divide as per the number of divisions which means if it is dividing into three branch the each branch will receive one third of the total incoming current so i can say the current coming from point d will go to this three branch as current from d to e will be i by 3 for d to g will also be i by 3 and for d to c it will also be I by 3. I hope all the three points are clear to you. Now, when this current I by 3 is received by point E, it further divides into two parts and those two parts will also be equal. So E to F and E to H will receive half of I by 3, which is I by 6. So we have E to F current as I by 6 and E to H as current I by 6. Similarly, point G also receives the current from D which distributes into two parts to transmit it to point B and to point F. So again they will receive half of the I by 3 which is I by 6 and over here also I by 6. Now the same thing will be repeated for point C which will give current to point H and point B as half of I by 3 which is I by 6 and I by 6 again. So I hope this part is clear to you. Now as you can see at point F I by 6 is coming from two terminals. So they merge and they give a total current of 2i by 6 which is i by 3 to give it to or terminal A. Similarly for point H the current comes from E as well as C to give us 2i by 6 which is again i by 3. So this will also be i by 3. And the point B also receives current from point G and point C to make the total current again I by 3 and finally all the I by 3 3 branches merges to give the current as I. So now we have got the current direction and magnitude for all the branches involved in the entire cubical arrangement. So now we can go ahead to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to find the equivalent resistance. Let's go for it. We can apply Kirchhoff's voltage law for the loop.
A, B, C, D, and A via the backing. So I can say the loop name is going to be A, B, C, D, A. So we are going to apply the KVL for this loop. Now when we apply the KVL, we follow the sign convention of Kirchhoff's voltage law. So while going from A to B, we are going in the opposite direction of the current. So we can say it is going to be positive current into the resistance of AB which is R. While going from B to C, we are again going in the opposite direction of current. So it is going to be positive I by 6 into the resistance of BC which is also R. And last when we go from C to D, we again go in the opposite direction of the current. So we get plus I by 3 into the resistance between C and D which is again R. Now the last part D to A, we come across a battery and while going from D to A, we are going from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery and so definitely it is going to be minus E. And the total has to be zero. Now this equation milne ke baad, we can very clearly say that our total EMF hoga, that is capital E will be equal to ye idhar leke. we can add all of this so we can take the LCM to be 6 so here 2 multiply karenge yaha pe 1 or yaha pe 2 and definitely IR hoga common so when we add this we get E is equal to 5 I R by 6. Now please pay attention to the very important point. Can I say that this entire particular cubical arrangement of resistance can be represented by a single resistance whose value or whose name will be R A D. So if I redraw this circuit as is pure ko mein represent karu ek single resistance se to kuch aisa dikhega ye hoga tumhara emf e this is your emf e and this will be rad which is actually the equivalent resistance of this entire cubical arrangement and definitely the current is going to be I. So can I say is particular circuit ke liye E will be equal to I into RAD. Now, dono equation ko dhyan se dekho. Dono mein the left hand side is same. Which means equating right hand side of both the equations. We get 5i r by 6 is equal to i r a d. i gets cancelled and so r a d is 5 r by 6. And that is the equivalent resistance between two points which are on the body diagonal of the cube. And that value is 5 R by 6.